Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel on this beautiful day in New York City. Before we get started, if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so so that you never miss a video, especially because I'm about to take a little break for the summer and I will be putting out videos less consistently, just more around the interesting things that I see during my travels upstate and beyond. But for today, our first stop is going to be Vito Schnabel Gallery to see a really special two-part exhibition curated by Bruno Bischofberger of paintings from Julian Schnabel created from 1978 to 1987. I will leave the date that each artwork was created on the screen so you can really appreciate that. And the second part of this exhibit will take place at Vito Schnabel's second New York gallery space in the West Village. This exhibit contains a number of Schnabel's plate paintings, which if you haven't seen them before, you're in for a real treat because they're exactly what they sound like. They're paintings made from a variety of dishware, but mostly plates in addition to some cups and other things. Schnabel made his first plate painting in 1978 when he was traveling through Europe at a time when painting was supposedly considered to be dead, and this was sort of his way of reinventing it. And then he had his first solo painting exhibition shortly after in 1979 in New York at Mary Boone Gallery. And then honestly, his career kind of exploded after that. He started having shows at institutions like the Tate and Whitechapel Gallery in London as early as 1982, which was just three years later. So very impressive. In addition to his plate paintings, I would say that Schnabel is most famous for his velvet paintings. Again, pretty self-explanatory. He paints on velvet, which gives this really rich depth to his works. And you'll see a few of them like this one in this show. Our next stop is Hauser & Worth Gallery, who has a number of great exhibits on view right now. Unfortunately, we only have time to see one, and that is the one that's on the fifth floor gallery space.
This is an exhibit of works titled Splits by the Hungarian artist Rita Ackerman. The name is featuring a technique that she's applied to these new paintings where she's divided the picture plane into three screens, so the canvas is split, to clearly separate the elements of drawing and painting, creating this, quote, dynamic tension between revelation and concealment. One of the many things that I love about Ackerman's work is how she always seems to find the perfect balance between contrasting visuals. So for example, figuration and abstraction, color and achromatic, transparency and opaqueness, all of these elements are in constant conflict, but they're somehow harmonious at the same time. Another thing that Ackerman set out to capture in this new series of works is movement. And this is one of my favorite examples of this. You can see these various limbs at the top of the work that almost look like they're walking across the campus. Our next stop is Lisan Gallery to see an exhibit that's unlike anything you've probably seen in a gallery space before. I know that it was for me. This is an exhibit by Hugh Hayden titled Humans, which is a very funny play on his last name and humans. And as you can see, he's recreated a very spacious bathroom with a series of stalls that house various sculptures mostly made of his signature material of wood, but he's also explored using other materials like metal as well. Hayden is known for creating sculptures that examine society and question why we exist in the way that we do. So by creating these stalls in a public space where the viewer has to enter what is normally a very private area, Hayden is disrupting these notions of privacy and intimacy, quote, urging viewers to reconsider their relationship with public spaces. It definitely feels like you're doing something wrong at first when you're in the exhibit. Not even because you're entering these bathroom stalls, but because it's unclear what you're even allowed to do. Like, can you open the door? Can you touch the art? Super interesting.
Our next stop is going to be Gladstone Gallery and rest in peace to the great Barbara Gladstone, the founder of this gallery. She just sadly passed away at the age of 89. And this is an exhibit of works by Amy Silman, who is a favorite of mine, honestly. I think a common question that people often ask is, who's an artist you would collect if you could? And Amy Silman is definitely one for me. Others are Cecily Brown, Mary Weatherford, Rita Ackerman that we just saw, Adrian Guinea, just to name a few. Let me know in the comments. I'm actually very curious what yours would be. This show features both paintings, drawings, and actually a video as well by Silman. So Silman sees her works as the pursuit of abstraction, as a departure from obvious beauty, and an investigation into the elements of art like shape, line, form, color, texture, and value. In the second gallery space, there are 74 works on paper arranged in this dramatic grid that really highlight the various stages of mark making over time, sort of like a film reel unfolding. And I think it's always cool to see an artist's process in the form of a study. It's particularly interesting to me for an artist that predominantly makes abstract works because I find their studies are very different from those of an artist who's creating figurative works or realism. Our next stop is going to be Petzl Gallery to see a show of paintings by the Berlin-born artist Stephanie Heinz that, quote, examine systems of knowledge and truth, questioning traditional ideas of representation. Heinz is influenced by the theory of the third hand in painting, which if you've never heard about this, like I had not, it's the experience of transcendence, which overtakes the artist at that critical point of flow state absorption. So this kind of utopian surrealist world that we see in Heinz's paintings, it reveals itself to her over time as she's creating it. And in terms of materials she uses, most of the works are oil, acrylic, and graphite on linen, if you're curious. Thank you. 
We're going to end the day at Pace Gallery with two exhibits, starting with this one from Adam Pendleton. So Pendleton hasn't had a show at Pace's New York Gallery space in 10 years, so the show is quite significant. He's had a number of museum shows during that time, like his most recent at the Museum of Modern Art in New York in 2021, which honestly feels like yesterday. I can't believe that was three years ago. And New York is also where he's based. If you're not familiar with Adam Pendleton, he's known for creating these abstract works, often black and white, with textures reminiscent of graffiti. And in them, he, quote, examines what blackness is and how it relates to our humanity and how our understanding of a history of blackness impacts our understanding of the present and in turn, our collective capacity for change. He's, quote, guided by a visual and structural philosophy he has termed Black Dada, which is an ongoing inquiry into blackness and its relationship to abstraction and conceptions of the avant-garde. In fact, each of the works in the show have one or more letters from the phrase Black Dada, so curious to see if you can spot any of them. The show contains 12 paintings and 13 drawings in total that are in this really incredible layout of five black triangular forms built specifically for this show. It kind of feels like you're in a maze that really transforms the gallery space into a place of exploration and wonder. The show continues on another floor of the gallery. This is one of my favorites because it's kind of hidden. It's like a little haven amongst all the Chelsea buildings, but these are sculptures by Adam Pendleton. This is the top floor gallery space, and this is where we'll see our final show of the day by Tara Donovan, and it features a series of sculptures that are all created from CDs. And if you're not familiar with Tara Donovan, she's known for this process of creating the most incredible, intricate, beautiful sculptures from everyday objects like buttons and coffee straws and styrofoam cups and window screens and just so much. And while I'm normally not the biggest fan of minimalism, her sculptures ironically achieve minimalism through this extreme detail. I, I honestly can't imagine how she painstakingly arranges all of these various objects in her studio. I'm sure it's probably a mix of being very meditative, but also craze inducing. I also love how they've chosen the show to be in this particular gallery space because I think the sculptures mirror the high rises on the horizon in Hudson Yards so beautifully. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed these shows. As I said earlier, I will be taking a little break for summer to prepare for the fall. I have so many exciting things to share with you all. So again, be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss anything. And I will see you all in a bit.